Last time on Mastering AMC 1012, we covered geometric counting, rectangles, counting squares, and various tricky tetrahedral and dodecahedral problems. But today, we're covering geometric probability. Sounds similar to geometric counting, but it actually is very different. So geometric probability is a way to calculate probability by measuring outcomes geometrically. And it's very useful when outcomes are infinite. Basically, take an infinite outcomes, you make a combo problem into a geo problem. That's basically what it is, except it gets a lot more complicated. So to do geometric count probability, you try a few examples, and you always make sure to mark the extreme cases because you're trying to find bounds so you can convert it into a geometry problem. And then use geometry I know everyone's favorite subject to find the area of this region. So it can be very useful when the number of possible outcomes is infinite. And that is the key thing because we don't know how to count infinitely possibilities, but geometric probability does. As we're about to see in this example, where Chloe chooses a real number uniformly at random from this interval zero to 2017. Independently, Laurent chooses a real number at random from the interval 0 to 4034. What's the probability that Laurent's number is greater than Chloe's number? Assuming they can't be equal. Well, it doesn't matter whether they're equal because we're talking about an infinitely possible amount of possibilities here, and compared to that, equal is infinitely small. But as you're about to see here, so let's the way to approach geometric probability is to, let's graph it in a way. 0, 2017, Chloe, 0, 4034, that's Laurent. So Laurent chooses a real number at random, and Chloe also chooses a real number at random. What's the probability that Laurent's number is bigger? Well, in this diagram, Laurent is x, Chloe is y. The y-axis, that by that we mean. So, for Laurent's number to be bigger, what must be true? x must be greater than y. Okay, so x must be greater than y. What does that mean? Well, we know that x equals y is going to look something like this where this goes till 2017, comma, 2017. What about x greater than y, or rather y less than x? y less than x, so it will be under, and under would be right here, something like this over here. Okay, it's under, so, now what? It's, it's an infinite number of possibilities. We have it graphed. Now we just use geometry to find the area. So this is 2017, right? The height. This, I know my diagram is not very good, but this, the whole length is 4034. 4, and from here to here is 2017. So this is also 2017, this red length over here. So now, what's the probability that Lorentz number is bigger? It's just the area of this trapezoid divided by the area of the rectangle, because this rectangle represents all the regions, and this trapezoid is just the regions where Lorentz number is bigger. So what is the area of the trapezoid? We use the formula, 2017 plus 4034 divided by 2 times 2017, and that's over the area of the entire rectangle, 2017 times 4034, these cancel, and at this point, this is just 2017, multiplying by 2 to the numerator and denominator, this is over 6, or let me just write it as 2 times 4034, and 4034 is 2 times 2017, this is 3 times 20. 17 over 
and that's going to be 4 times 2017. So therefore, the answer is 3 over 4. And that is a classic example of geometric probability, but it can get a lot more complicated. Real numbers x and y are chosen independently and uniformly at random, from the interval 0 to 1. Which of the numbers is closest to the probability x, y, and 1 are the side lengths of an obtuse triangle? First of all, what do we know about an obtuse triangle? Well, we know it's x, y, and 1. So you can derive this by Pythagorean theorem or law of cosines or whatever. But it's a general fact that x squared plus y squared must be less than 1. Because x squared plus y squared equals 1 is the Pythagorean theorem. An obtuse triangle is a little bit more stretched. So 1 is more than this for it to be an obtuse triangle. Let's graph this, just like we did for the previous problem. You might recognize this as a circle with radius 1. Circle with radius 1, and it's under, because y squared is less than 1 minus x squared. So y is less than, so it's under. You can just draw like this right here. Where this is from 0 to 1, 0 to 1. So, is that it? Is it just pi over 4 then? Is that our answer? Because that's the area of a quarter circle? Careful, because it says side lengths of an obtuse triangle. It's two words, not just one. What about triangle? Not all things that satisfy this are triangles. What if, what if x and y are like 0 0.0001, and then it would just be two segments detached from each other? We have to satisfy triangle inequality. x plus y has to be more than 1, strictly more than and this means y is greater than 1 minus x. And what is the equation for 1 minus x? The equation for 1 minus x is just something like this, negative 1 slope. Or you can also just see that x plus y equals 1 means from 1 to 1. And it has to be more than this. So we're going to draw up from here. So our actual area, this quarter semicircle, which is r squared pi by 4, r is 1, so just pi by 4, minus this triangle over here. 1 times 1 divided by 2, minus half. That's the area of the triangle that does not work. And this all over 1, 1 times 1. And now we can just estimate this. We know pi is about 3.14-ish, so it's about 0. Point, around 7, 9, 7, 8, 7, 9 types. 7, 9 minus 0. 0.5, which is about 0 0.29, and none of the option choices are even close, so we know we're good. And that is the answer for this one. Okay, now expected value. So expected value is kind of like a weighted sum. It represents how much you're expected to gain out of a situation. We're going to discuss this a lot more next time over here.